any questions about that, I'm going to put you to the test. We're going to see, let's, let's look at some examples of, of news going on right now. I already just listed a bunch, but let's see how well you, uh, how well you can identify news values. Okay, so I'm just doing this. I'm just going to, on the fly, let's do this here. Let's go on to USA Today. Okay, well, let's start with this one. Okay, so the, um, the magazine that saw the deaths of, of the cartoonist and the editor and the others, uh, Charlie Hebdo, Charlie Hebdo, uh, they put, they put a, an image of Muhammad on the cover uh, in cartoon form. All right, so we see what kind of news values would we have with this story. The cartoon image of Muhammad on the cover. Think of back in the news values. Conflict. Conflict, definitely. That's the one I would go to right away, conflict, because uh, uh, this is forbidden, right? And they're kind of thumbing it in the face of Muslims, right? So, you know, look what you, you've, we're going to um, put it out there even more now. So that's, I mean, that's pretty intense. And that's, it's a, uh, a big deal. So conflict, what else? Currency. Currency, okay, ongoing thing, uh, still unraveling, still, um, still happening. But related to that, that sounds like that is immediacy slash timeliness, right? This just happened like yesterday. This was released. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Uh, hmm. All right, how about this one? Brittany Maynard, does anyone remember this story? Uh, no. No? Yes? Over here? What happened in the story? Yes, this was assisted suicide in Oregon. I believe, yes, and she moved there so she could do that. She had terminal cancer. And this, um, now her husband's talking about, yeah, yeah, he's being interviewed. She did die. Um, why is this, what, what was newsworthy about this? A lot of people are doing that, right? Oregon has assisted suicide. Uh, what, why is she any different? How about someone over here? I feel like okay. her age was like, Yes. She was so young. 29. 29. Her age, she was a recent, uh, she recently was married. Uh, she's a pretty, you know, young woman and seems to have a f bright future. They wanted to have children, right? And, uh, and then this happens. Right? So that, so there's, um, you know, that being a factor, what, where would that fit in news values? Think about that. Yeah, that's a good point. Emotions, a human interest, regular person, right? That could have been me or, you know, that could have been you or that could be you. Or how would you handle it? You, and it starts to make you think about it, right? Uh, and, then, and also with that regular person, t terrible thing happening to her, um, but just on the cusp of life with her husband. Any other news values there? Conflict. Conflict, like woman versus disease sort of thing. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, big one. Without that controversy, there might not be a story, right? So we're talking currency here, as well as conflict of two sides on either, uh, you know, people on either side of the issue. Uh, news of the uh, no novelty here, kind of unusual. The fact that she's young, the fact that she was, um, you, you, you saw the pictures kind of before and after, you know, after the impact of the, the, the cancer and the drugs probably and, uh, you know, the, the medicines and that sort of thing. Uh, you know, that was, that would be, I mean, this is kind of the sad side of news. There's a cer certain um, luridness that, that fascinates people, even though we often won't admit it. Like, you know, oh, let me see her, how does she look now? And, and uh, what was her last video? And, and I'm and sad to say, a lot of us were, were very interested. There's a side of all of us, I think, we're very interested in, um, you know, others' misfortune, and, you know, gory images and that sort of thing. And so I think this fits under that, though, um, you know, most people, I think, they, they, I think most people were sympathetic and imagined themselves in, the, in her shoes. Let's we're, look back now at uh, both this thing I just handed out uh, and then also bring out this. Everybody has a story. The guy, Steve Hartman. Okay. So Steve Hartman is definitely one of my favorite reporters. Uh, I, I make my poor husband sit and watch his um, features and uh, discuss them. And he no longer does this. Everybody has a story. His thing now is Assignment America. It's on CBS News. It's on Friday nights. Try to catch that if you can. Uh, and then you can also see some of them online. But a long time ago, he was doing this where he would throw a dart 
and then he would interview somebody in that town by using the phone book and then pointing to it. Um, at, towards the end, he had the person, the last person who did their story, he had them throw the dart, which you're going to see in some examples here about to show you. Um, and he talks about in the story, in this article, uh, the, the challenges of this. What are some of the things you remember him saying, the challenges of this type of story? Yes. Okay, so it's time you have to like three or four times. you have to sit and talk to this person a long time and Traveling find it. Time. Yes. Like okay, good. This is this guy's kind of a character. This one's fun. Let's watch this. We drove a couple hours north of Fairbanks to where the road just plain. Seeks glimpse into past. All right, so that's really good, nice and specific headline. Not um, Judy Morris has interesting perspective. Well, everybody has interesting perspective, right? You want to. This is specifically about you know what she wants to do. So you want to come up with a specific headline like that. ISU sophomore Sorrell Gibbons aspires to write a book about the elderly. Right into a direct quote. Direct quote. I've always wanted to write a book about their experience throughout life. Gibbons said. I was inspired to do this as a sophomore in high school while reading a required book. I found it fascinating to be reading about this man's life. Gibbon said she relishes in learning about the elderly because she remembers her grandmother's story about meeting the president while on Girl Scouts. The elderly members of society have witnessed events she hasn't, which is why she strives to learn the details from the, their points of view. So do you see that? There's a paraphrase summary there, then an end to another quote. With this information, I plan to give younger generations insight about the world we live in and how much has changed throughout the years, she said. Okay, so I'm just pointing out some things, and you're not going to necessarily get it perfect the first time, but I'm just pointing out that you want to use these as a model. All right, let's go to the next one. So you're going to study these on your own. So the point I'm trying to make right here with these examples, you want to get into those direct quotes. As you're talking to the person right now, you're going to talk to the person next to you, and you're going to take some notes about what they're saying. You're going to try to get them talking. Right, you're going to try to come up, nail upon, come upon something that's interesting about them. Uh, it might be they want to write a book. It might be they're in the military while they're in school. It might be they're they, they're married and they have several children. Uh, they might be they, um, you know, they lived in an unusual place. They they moved around a lot as a kid. I don't know. You're going to hone in on something and then try to get them to tell you more about that. And you're going to weave it into a story. It's short, pretty short, 400 words. That's about a page. It's not very long. For next time. All right. So, question. Do you want it double space like this, or do you want it laid out like this? Thank you for asking. I love that you asked that because this is one of my big things. I want it double space like the first one. Okay. So please, 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 double space with a headline. All right. So you're going to take a crack at this. This is a major assignment, but you're but and you're going to get a chance to revise it. So just don't let it scare you. But what I do want you to do now is turn to the person next to you, and we're missing someone here, so we're going to have to figure this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, no, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we have ten. Okay, good. So we, we'll have enough. Okay, so that means that someone from up here will have to go back down to over, maybe you two there. Okay, and so, um, so you two here can interview each other, right? Make sure you get your name spelled right of your person. You two here, right? You might be meeting for the first time. You two, you two, and you two. Okay, and I'll come up. All right, so go to it. Hi, online convergent news writers. I'm at home. As you can see, uh, we're a dog family, dog loving family. We have four dogs. Anyway, just to give you some details about this assignment, as I said in the video, in class we do this. 15 minutes, 20 minute interview, tops, and then students will write the article for the very next class. Type it, double space it, give me the word count at the bottom of the article at the end. Don't forget to write a headline, a really specific headline with the last name of the person you interviewed. Now, how we're going to do this in this class is I'm going to assign you someone to interview from the class. All right, you want to either do it in person, which is preferable, so you want to arrange that or over the phone, okay, and then Skype would be another option. Please don't, inter don't interview over email, don't interview by texting, unless you're trying to clear up some details later after you've actually physically interviewed the person, either in person or by phone or Skype. 
make sure to hand write some notes down okay on a sheet of paper maybe a few sheets of paper because you're going to be turning that in in the assignment now I'm going to assign everybody a partner to interview try to contact them within 24 hours interview them by Wednesday and then go ahead and write up the article and turn it in by Thursday at 5 p.m. okay so you're not going to have that long to do this but it's much longer than the in-class students have so I need you to turn that in by Thursday 5 p.m. preferably bringing it to my office 125 liberal arts and putting it in my box because you're stapling your notes to the article and you're printing out the article so I don't have to and that saves me a step now some of you might not be on campus that day I understand you can uh, turn it in on Moodle or email if you're not on campus but it's really preferable for you to hand to give it to either me or um, the administrative assistant Virginia will be there um, the reason that is is because you want to save your teacher an extra step you know if I'm printing out everything that the class does you know that tends to sometimes lead to some disgruntled behavior oh, I wish the student had printed this out so preferably you print it out but again I understand some some of you may not be on campus every day of the week um, and you may not live here but for most of us hopefully you can turn it in Thursday 5 p.m. at the latest into my box liberal arts 125 now if the person that you're assigned to um, refuses to meet with you or you don't hear from him or her at all it could be that that person is still deciding about the class and may end up dropping the class that this isn't for them and that's fine but you need to contact me as soon as you can um, probably you know by Wednesday noon so we can reassign you to somebody else um, and I expect that to maybe happen to a few of you because there might be a few people at this point you decide this is too much work I don't want to do it so um, you need to let me know and we will reassign you to somebody different in the class all right so this is should be kind of a fun assignment good luck and notice your assigned person you're interviewing um, it's going to be sent to you by email okay I'll see you soon